Welcome to the SMB Community Podcast with your hosts, Amy Babinchak, James Kernan, and Carl Polichuk. Produced by and for the Small Biz Thoughts community, we're dedicated to making every IT professional a successful IT professional. Are you still relying on a frustrating patchwork of legacy solutions? Modernize your cybersecurity and data protection with the Cronus CyberProtect Cloud. It's a single solution that combines backup, anti-malware, and endpoint protection management. As an MSP, you can easily improve client security posture, eliminate complexity, and generate more recurring revenue. Learn more about Acronis CyberProtect Cloud at acronis.com. Hi, this is Carl. Welcome to another SMB Community Podcast. I'm joined today by Donna Turgeon, who is from InfoSec IQ. Uh, in her role as head of channel, Donna will lead InfoSec's channel sales team and indirect go-to-market strategy operations and revenue globally. Uh, she brings 30 years experience driving indirect and direct revenue, ensuring customer success, delivering global go-to-market programs, leading corporate channel and distribution strategy, recruiting and onboarding business partners, and building effective global sales and support teams. Wow. How about all that? Wow. <laughs> Welcome. <That's helpful. laughs> Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm so happy to be here. So let's uh, start with a little bit about who you are and how you got here and kind of what, what's your background. Yeah, thanks, Carl. Uh, appreciate it. Um, I have been in the IT industry uh, basically all of my career. Um, started out with uh, Tech Data, uh, who is now Tech Data Cynix, uh, uh, one of the actually the world's largest uh, global IT distributor. I did business with over 500 different manufacturers. Um, headed up the sales organization there, tapped on the shoulder to head over to product marketing and understand kind of the product side of the house. Um, and that's what really got me interested in, in security and the, in the cyberspace. Uh, worked for um, some of our competitors. Um, and worked for a know before and uh, Viper Security Group, um, heading up um, email endpoint and all kinds of cybersecurity technologies, um, not only from a sales standpoint, but um, like you said earlier, the service and support aspect as well, which you know, um, I love to do. I, I love to build organizations from scratch and have had the opportunity to come on board with InfoSec within the last year here to really um, um, uh, recalibrate and uh, reorganize and relaunch a, a very dynamic uh, channel sales organization for InfoSec as it relates to our products and services and have the opportunity to um, build a world-class channel organization. Um, right now, all of the people that we've hired and brought on board, um, we have uh, over, you know, probably 150 years of experience combined in the channel, um, and more specifically, channel cybersecurity. So, very excited to to bring this um, uh, this uh, uh, offering to market and and begin to really share uh, what we can do to help uh, grow in partnership. Um, with our partner community. Well, I love that focus on channel. It, it cracks me up when people come on the show and they say, <laughs> well, I think we should go direct and, you know, cut out the middleman and it, you know, you make, um, I, we make more money. And I'm like, okay, well, that's good for you. <laughs> yeah. You know, you laugh. I, I just, I say people that really don't know channel, don't know channel, right? I mean, right. you almost have to live and breathe it every day and almost be born in it to really love it and have the passion. And, you know, I breathe channel from my toes to my nose. I am a true advocate for our partner community, um, the whole land and expand methodology. Um, you know, I really don't understand how businesses can just, you know, do it one by one by one by one from a business standpoint without partnering with true partners, um, having mutual accountability for growth. Um, and then that's where the fun begins. So um, really excited uh, about all the things that we've accomplished so far. And, and again, want to get the word out to recruit and enhance our partner community to join in that success. Very good. So the website is infosecinstitute.com uh, mm -hmm. and then slash channel, of course, we'll, mm -hmm. we'll get you the yep. channel info. Um, so let's uh, talk a little bit about infosec. So it's, is it fundamentally a training company and I, uh, security training? 
Yeah, we we pride ourselves on being a, a world class and award winning uh, education platform, for lack of better terms. Right. Um, we were recently acquired by Cengage Group, uh, which you know is in higher education learning. Um, so you know our thread of similarity across the board is really you know learning and and educating users across the board, uh, whether it's higher ed. Uh, from an infosec standpoint, it is uh, more specifically cybersecurity and IT training. So we have two products, actually two or three products in our portfolio today. Number one is our um, is our um, infosec IQ product, which is security awareness training. Right, is uh, protecting companies from you know from themselves from an employee standpoint. A very hot market to be in. A lot of regulations that companies need this sort of protection. Um, and you know we have a great product. Uh, we are in the right. Uh, upper right hand quadrant uh, being best in class from a security uh, awareness uh, product portfolio and service standpoint. So very proud about that. We'll compete with the best of them uh, any day. Um, we also have a um, an infosec skills offering, which is uh, really exciting and and helps to differentiate us from a security learning provider, if you will, which is helping um, individuals within companies to. Uh, increase their uh, IT proficiency, right, through certification and um, um, uh, training that helps them better themselves to be more um, um, uh, advantageous to the particular company that they work for. Or if they're not working today and they want to better market themselves having IT certifications under their belt, it's a great way for them to become proficient. And, you know, we have a whole process of guaranteeing pass rates and, and things like that for people to increase their IT proficiency. So what exactly uh, would a SMB IT consultant mm -hmm. sell to their clients? What is it like the daily training, the weekly training, you know, uh, drip training? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so any partner of ours, uh, whether uh, it is a reseller or a managed service provider or a consultant or if someone, you know, is under a referral program with us as a partner to refer our services, um, it's quite simple. They would either um, um, sell our security awareness training to one of their end user businesses, right, with our help where we help to demo and, and make sure that the partner is enabled to talk about our products and services, uh, or they would sell these uh, skills training for IT proficiencies you know, to their businesses, um, um, or that can also be done in a boot camp environment as well, where we actually come on site to actually do on-site training. And is the security awareness training a one-time thing? It is, uh, we have multiple classes, best in class content, um, you know, depending on the kind of training that they want. We have a lot of gamification and, you know, different ways of training. So there's multiple classes. Many of our partners uh, resell our services to businesses. Um, and maybe they'll start out with a couple uh, security awareness training, maybe phishing to start and then want to move more into the um, comprehensive cybersecurity training uh, classes. So we have hundreds of classes to offer. Um, and, you know, it's subscription based. It's a SaaS based product. So it's renewable every single year. Uh, we work in consultation with our partners to make sure that the businesses that they sell to are really aware of the classes that are offered, um, a lot of dynamic reporting that tells those businesses who in their environment has taken the class, who hasn't, what are pass rates, you know, how their fish prone percentage is actually increasing and getting better. They have less and less of their employees making mistakes uh, on the computer and, you know, clicking into um, you know, um, bad emails or bad, you know, um, cyber links or that kind of thing. So, you know, it's truly a partnership where we enable our partners to better resell uh, security awareness training to their businesses or to resell those IT certification classes as well. Um, we're finding a lot of our partners, and this is a huge differentiator with InfoSec, is uh, we um, are offering, uh, as we're signing on net new partners, some free uh, complimentary skills training, because um, I just attended CompTIA a few weeks ago um, um, in Chicago and listened to a lot of our managed service providers, and they're struggling with keeping good, talented um, individuals on their staff 
Right. Uh, and, you know, we want to provide them with some uh, skills training so that we can get the MSPs, uh, individuals on their staff, skilled and IT proficient so they can be better, better advocates for InfoSec to their end users. So um, it's, it's a really exciting time to not only resell security awareness training, but to have these other offerings and having a dedicated channel friendly team um, that can work in partnership with the partners in order to enhance their growth. So is it difficult to get end users to buy in? Because, you know, we, we sort of have this sense of like, I have all these things. I've spent money on a firewall. I've spent money yeah. on this and that and the other thing. And all of this automated stuff, it's supposed to take care of everything and make my life easy. Now you're telling me I have to personally go to training. Like I'm the executive director, I, you know, or or I'm the salesperson or I'm the, the front office person. Yeah. Uh, you know, they they I think they don't get how important that you yeah. mentioned phishing, but their personal mm -hmm. behavior affects the security of their their entire organization. Yeah, absolutely. That's such a great question, and you know, I'll I'll kind of answer that in a way. Um, I in my career have also been um, involved in healthcare technology, right? Where uh, we provided electronic health records, and it was at the early stages when doctors thought you can't change me to electronic health <laughs> records. I have all these paper files, and I've always done it this way, and it works, and we're fine, right? Well, you know, obviously uh, there were a lot of um, uh, incentives for office to offices to transition to electronic health records because it's more efficient, it's better continuity of care for the patient, all of these things. And that industry has totally evolved, right? I mean, there's probably very few offices you go into today that are paper. Um, most are paperless and have transitioned to the electronic health records. Um, I think we see a very similar uh, thread in the cybersecurity um, training. We don't need training. We've been okay. You know, but look at everything that's happening in cybersecurity today, all the attacks and the awareness of now there's cybersecurity insurance that protect companies from these attacks. And, you know, so more and more now, more than ever, the increase in cybersecurity protection at the employee level is, is, is more prevalent now than ever before. And more companies are seeing that that can help protect them, right, from these cyber attacks if, if they do it at the front line with their employees, in addition to email security and endpoint. It's kind of a, a robust uh, cybersecurity or security um, strategy within the company and cybersecurity um, um, security awareness training is a piece and part of that overall solution today. Yeah. And then more and more it's being required. You know, if exactly. you want that insurance, uh, yeah, you, you can't just check the box. You have to actually. <laughs> you do. Training. And I know that firsthand, my son is actually a commercial uh, insurance broker and he sells cybersecurity insurance. And um, I have seen the stipulations in the policy that says, if you have, you need this, you need EDR, you need this, you need this, 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 this. And if you don't have this, we can insure you, right? The insurance companies want to protect their risk and make sure that the people that they're insuring have taken certain um, certain steps to help protect themselves, right? To minimize the risk. So um, you are absolutely right, Carl. Um, there's well, a and lot those insurance that. companies spent, I don't know, 10 years selling cybersecurity insurance and not checking up on any of that. And then yeah. when it suddenly hit, mm -hmm. uh, they were just losing their yeah, shorts. Sure, and so exactly. now mm -hmm. they're cracking down <laughs> yeah. as much as they should have uh, 15 years ago. Yeah, so, um, so how is this sold? Is it uh, uh, per end user? Like if mm -hmm. they have whatever, uh, 25 employees or 100 employees, and then you sell so many licenses. Is that how it's deployed? Absolutely. It's, it's, pretty, it's very straightforward. They buy... Um, um, uh, the number of users, right? Uh, we have different price points uh, for our partners based on, you know, how our partners buy for us on behalf of the businesses that they sell to. Um, and we have price breaks based on, uh, based on uh, volume and how many, um, you know, um, how many users in a subscription that they buy. Um, so yes, they buy on a uh, number of users um, at a certain price point, uh, which is an annual 
could be a two year, three year subscription, um, and then it's renewed uh, uh, at that particular time. Um, for our MSPs, which is very exciting uh, that we've just launched, is an opportunity for our MSPs to uh, uh, for us to bill them monthly. A lot of MSPs will bill bill their um, end user community, their businesses, on a monthly basis, and we want to make sure that we are have a synchronized billing methodology based on how they bill their end users. So we also have that option for managed service providers based on certain um, quantity levels. Right. So um, you mentioned the uh, reports of uh, how people are doing, for example, in the phishing and so forth. Yeah. Is that a dashboard or is it an annual printed report or weekly or how is that presented? Yeah, so we have an on-demand, we have a, a great partner portal that we've just recently launched as well, and we'll continue to um, market and, and, and make sure that our uh, partners are enabled on how to use it. Uh, within our portal, um, there are actual um, uh, individual dashboards at the, at the partner level that, is on de that are on-demand. Um, in, in addition, each one of our partners has a dedicated channel account manager based on the geography or the specialty that you know they're in, whether it's an MSP or, or a reseller. We have dedicated individuals that have been trained and have the background to work with MSPs or resellers. Um, they are dedicated to a group of um, partners um, across North America, Latin America, and, um, and Canada. Um, and they are dedicated to those particular partners where we do quarterly business reviews. So some of that reporting might be a manual dashboard or might be enhanced with some you know, different um, metrics that that particular partner wants over and above what's in the portal. So um, we do have on-demand. Uh, we have um, regular uh, QBR schedules with our top partners uh, where we can review any kind of metrics that they're looking for. Um, we want to make it as easy as possible for our partners to be able to manage their end users to show the need to increase number of users, right? right. So, you know, we, we, we like to hit those saturation rates at that end user level, right? So that there's not just 25 licenses and 25 people are being trained on security awareness, because then you have 75% of your organization say that is unprotected or, you know, right. they're not enabled, they don't know. So, um, you know, we, we really like to understand what we call the TAM and the SAM. What's the total available market share? How much other opportunity do we have to uh, maximize? How do we continue to enable the partners and educate the businesses as well? So do you recommend that uh, MSPs uh, basically put together a program for their clients and say, you know, let's, mm -hmm. here's, here's introduction, here's taking the first classes, and then here's what we're going to do going forward? Because it's sort of like, uh, clients are never going to take the time to design a program for themselves, right? right? Yeah. So the question is, how do you how do you get them to do that? Do you recommend that MSPs do that for them? Yeah, we, we do. I mean, you know, MSPs they're service providers to their end users, right? Uh, usually, you know, they have a smaller set of businesses. It's not hundreds and hundreds, but it's a a small, usually regional set of, of end users that they deal with. So they want to be that trusted advisor for those businesses, right? So those businesses are going to come to their managed service provider and say, help me with my cybersecurity strategy, right? So yes, uh, absolutely. Um, and what we're doing, which is a differentiator as well, is the team that we've built is all inclusive. It's all channel knowledgeable people. Uh, we have a channel marketing team that is not only to, to help the inside uh, channel AEs or account managers to market to partners, but part of their responsibility is to build enablement um, toolkits for our partners, right? To help provide them the InfoSec toolkit so that they can put their own brand on it and then deliver it to their uh, end users or their businesses as well. Very cool. So is there a charge for that? There's not. There's not. Uh, we have, uh, you know, to be an MSP, we have certain guidelines in order to go monthly billing. And, you know, we'll manage that on a monthly basis with their dedicated AE based on volume levels and increased usage. You know, we want to work in partnership with our MSPs to grow their business, right, and help them navigate and give them the tools in order to grow and to be InfoSec specific. So um, there, there's no charge for, you know, our support. 
uh, from a marketing standpoint, um, but we're going to work in partnership to make sure that we're growing together as well. Very cool. Uh, so we'll put the link down below. It's the infosecinstitute.com. Uh, right. So tell me about uh, these toolkits. Like, Give me an example of like what's in one of the, the toolkits. Yeah. And one thing I'll mention to you, Carl, and I can send it to you after, is a direct link for our partners to get to us is partners at infosec.com. And I'll, I'll send that to you um, after so that we have this uh, as well. Um, um, but that will get right to our, our channel team specifically. All right. Um, you know, so our, our toolkit is, is really, um, you know, how to do business with InfoSec. The, the uh, welcome kit, when someone first comes on board, will actually give the name of the account executive, you know, our hours, all of our websites, you know, the information to our marketing. So it's really kind of this a laundry list of, oh my gosh, here's all my contacts. And oftentimes partners do business with a company. They're like, I don't know who to call, you know, or they have to call another department that has no idea of how to do business with the channel. Ours is all self-contained. Um, and, and so it's, it's a laundry list, a uh, welcome kit of how to do business with us. As far as the marketing toolkit is concerned, we've just gone through and refurbished and um, relaunched all of our InfoSec channel marketing materials. Our entire uh, wiki, for lack of better terms, is updated um, with new branding. Um, there's opportunities within our portal for uh, that's part of this toolkit for the individual partner to go into the portal and see uh, all of our marketing materials that they can co-brand as well. Right. So they have all of that. And then they have access to our marketing department that can work with them on things that aren't necessary in the standard toolkit. Right. If they want to do a co-event or if they want to um, go and do an on-site web and or an on-site uh, visit, enablement visit with their end user, we'll uh, accompany them on that visit to help them sell, if you will. Um, so, you know, there's some ad hoc uh, additions to the to the toolkit, and then there's the standard marketing materials that they can co-brand, and we can work with them consultatively to put together a nice package to make it um, uh, specific to whoever they're presenting to. Right. Well, I've always been a huge fan of education marketing, you mm -hmm. know, educate a crowd and then... Uh, if they want to know more, who do they talk to? Well, they talk to the person in the front of the room. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> exactly. it, it works perfectly to say, look, not only am I going to teach you, you know, talk to a, a rotary club or whatever, I will, I'll, I will give you some training today, but training is a part of what we do. It's just like literally built into our managed service offering. I think that has huge potential. Oh, absolutely. And you know what? You know, talking to the MSPs, um, especially at this CompTIA event, um, they are they're 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 struggling to kind of be a one trick pony. They they are now going through a transformation where they are partnering with other MSPs, right, to have that collective offering to their end user base, and they're very selective on what partners are going to step up to the plate and help them be better, be the best they can be, right? I mean, they don't have any time for, for vendors that don't follow up, that vendors that don't understand their business, they don't have updated materials for them, you know, their pricing's all over the place, you know, there's no marketing assistance. We've attempted to take every pain point based on my experience as the leader of the group and the people that I've hired in, in their past history, what are the top 20 pain points for partners? And every single one of those pain points we've attempted or in the process of capitalizing and building into our entire offering mm -hmm. so that we are considered best in class. And the industry considers us best in class based on the latest uh, updates that just came out in reference to cybersecurity product solution. The good news is we have a fantastic, great product and now we have a fantastic, great channel team that can support our top partners to enable them to sell one of the most prevalent products in the industry, cybersecurity uh, um, uh, awareness training, right? It's a very hot market and they want people that they can work with, that they can partner with that are going to enable them for growth. Exactly. So um, how do you uh, keep it up to date, given the fact that 
you have the entire budget of the Russian government funding people who are hacking and getting paid hundreds of thousands of dollars a year in salary. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, and it, the hottest AI professionals in the world are on the wrong side of this equation. Yeah. And uh, how do you, you know, it, it's it's almost depressing. <laughs> like, yeah, how, how do you fight that, you know? Yeah, you're making me tired. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's so true. And you know what? I count on my strategic resources within InfoSec. Um, InfoSec, again, award-winning and very well known in the industry and respected uh, for the work that we've done in the past. But you know, you can't look back. You have to look forward. Things are changing every day. So you know, we have you know content teams and you know strategic teams, competitive analysis teams. You know that are constantly monitoring what's happening out there now you know i wish i could say uh i feel confident we're, we're prepared for every risk out there because probably during the time that we've talked there's probably you know a thousand more new ones right exactly but, um you know I, I feel confident and i and i wouldn't have joined infosec if i didn't feel that the product and the services were um um were refreshed and monitored to be the best they can be based on the latest things we can know and then build for. So, um, you know, we are very engaged with our partners to understand what are you seeing out there? You know, we're involved in CompTIA and Channel Pro and IOTSA and Channel Lead E. I mean, you know, any affiliation that we can partner with to learn more over and above what we know today is, is important and we're willing to make those investments. Um, so we're constantly learning. We always have our ear to the grindstone, if you will, trying to really, you know, prepare. Uh, my favorite word in the dictionary is anticipate. How do we best anticipate what's going to happen and then have the right wherewithal and reallocation of resources in order to prioritize something over something else, right? Right. So if something happens, so I remember last year, mm -hmm. 4th of July weekend, yeah. I went I went off to Nashville and uh -huh. it was the big Kaseya attack. Right. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so now it's like, okay, here's one more thing we have to educate yeah. people on. The next time something happens and there's like a new kind of attack, how quickly are you able to uh, add that to your, you know, group of uh, trainings? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I'd feel comfortable setting a key timeline, but I will say, piggybacking on I, what I was just saying is, you know, the team that's responsible to monitor those things and then quickly be able to prioritize actions within our technology team, um, you know, to, to shift as quickly as possible, uh, to reallocate resources, to capitalize on something that might just come up that we didn't anticipate or know of. Um, I feel confident that we can do that, um, you know, with the you know, best best in class, or at least, you know, I feel confident that we'll uh, have a solution and be able to um, responsibly communicate to our partners uh, what we have in place and when they can anticipate having something to, um, you know, offset that challenge. Yeah, it's interesting because, you know, training is one thing. I can get trained on how to use my phone system or yeah. the security, you know, uh, door security system or yeah. whatever, but cybersecurity is like, yeah, this training is it's good for 20 minutes. Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah you know, exactly. And, and but, you know what? Yeah, you hit a great point, uh, Carl. Being coming from like email security and endpoint security, you know, if there's a, a threat and something just goes down and the systems are completely, you know, um, uh, non functioning, if you will, I mean, that's, you know, that's priority number one. And those companies will need to have something in place right away to make sure those companies are up and running, right? With right. security awareness, you know, it's not like it's it's mission critical and something stops working, right? Um, it's just that we have to be prepared to make sure that we have a course or some kind of um, communication or information that references, you know, the latest attack or how to offset it. And we can start preparing those courses. Um, um, so, you know, that's a benefit we have based on the business that we're in is that, you know, prepare to educate after something happens versus mission critical, getting someone's systems up and running. Well, it's also great for MSPs because it's an ongoing need. It's, yeah. it's never going to stop. You know, the genie's not yeah. going back in the bottle. And uh, every, yeah. every time there's a turnover at a client, they need training. Every mm -hmm. time another month or another quarter goes by, they need a, a refresh. Exactly. And it's 
literally just has to keep being a part of what they sell uh, from now on. So. Absolutely. And and those partners have to feel comfortable to work with um, a vendor like InfoSec that's going to be there for them and ask them that how many net new, uh, you know, people have XYZ end user hired, you know, how can we work together to get them educated and enabled, right? So, um, you know, it's truly a, a partnership. And I know that's uh, uh, you know, a word everyone used, but it, it really comes down to prioritizing our action and really working in tandem with our partners to help them grow while leveraging a great product. Very good. Well, sadly, we're out of time, um, but uh, Donna Turgeon from InfoSec Security Institute, right? InfoSecInstitute.com. There we go. Uh, make sure I get it right. Uh, and uh, thank you for being here. Any final words before we go? No, I think just thank you so much, Carl, for uh, giving me the opportunity to continue to spread the word, if you will. And if anyone is ever interested in cybersecurity, we are here to service from a channel perspective um, at partners at infosec.com. Very good. Great. Thank you. This has been yet another SMB Community Podcast. Thank you for tuning in to the SMB Community Podcast. If you found this useful, interesting, or fun, please subscribe, share with your friends, and give us a thumbs up on your favorite social media. Please check out the show notes at smbcommunitypodcast.com and give us your feedback.